Yeah, Katie! Woo! Get it, get it! What's up? Chaz here in Wheaton, Illinois for Cyclocross Nationals. It is snowing outside, it is blustery, it is cold, it is perfect cyclocross weather, and we are here to check out the Cannondale Cyclocross team and Stu Thorne, the man behind the magic. They've been riding Zip for over a decade. We're gonna go find them and figure out what makes them shred. 10 years on Zip, how did it start? How did, how did Cannondale and Zip, how did that kind of relationship form? Well, um, it, was, it was long ago. I, I can't remember what year. There was a Nationals in Kansas City and. Uh, Andy Paskins and I sat in the back of a trailer and hashed out all the deals. And nice. Then, so what are we? What are you guys riding right now? So for the trainers in the training, you know, when they're out training or on the trainer, uh, and then we'll use a 303S tubeless, and you know, this one obviously got road tires on it, but we set them up with uh, cross tires as well for sure for certain training. And then uh, all the bikes have. Uh, service course SL bar and stem. I am here with Katie Klaus from Park City, Utah. Just won the Collegiate Nationals and warming up for your pre-ride today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is like prime cyclocross, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm really happy that it rained yesterday, so I think it'll make the course conditions pretty crazy. So yeah, the wind and cold is just making it even better. All right, here we are, race day. U23 women are racing. Katie Klaus is in the lead, two laps to go. Yeah, Katie! crew of people to make it possible, especially on days like this when increment weather means 50 mile an hour winds, surprise snow, all of the above. And so you guys run tubeless for the training and they do all their training, but you don't race on tubeless, you're racing on tubulars, right? Yeah, everything else is a 303 tubular. 303 tubular. And uh, we've been using those since the get-go. Um, the hub configuration has changed and the rim configuration has, you know, evolved yeah, yeah. over the years to it's a bomber wheel. We haven't had any problems. They are pretty bomb proof. Um, yeah. And you're only allowed to run 33 wide tires. Correct. That, so yeah. to me, that seems so narrow. It is. It, it's incredibly narrow. In it's almost a road tire. Yeah, in the, exactly. In the world of, uh, of wide tires, 33 is. is but so this is why having a wider, a little bit wider rim and the tubular that allows you to run the lower pressure is so important. Absolutely. Because traction is like hard to come by in that. And it's kind of yeah. like. Yeah, I mean, when we, uh, when we were over in Europe, I mean, they were down in the 11, 12 PSI range. So. That is insane to me. Yeah. So what low pressure, what is low pressure? I mean, I know it's specific to each athlete, but like, what are you kind of, what are we talking about here? 10, 11, 12 yeah, PSI? Yeah, low, low would be about 11 or 12. That is insane. Cause even tubeless, you're running like little teens, 20s, low 20s, yeah, and now you're going even lower. These are super, super low. That's crazy. And so for a course like this, where it's not super wet, like what do you, like, are you going to run a little more pressure? You're not going to go all the way low. Yeah, we won't go low, low here, but I mean, you know, I think someone, the lighter rider uh, will ride on my guess. And I, we haven't really gotten into it too much yet, but probably around 14 PSI. 14 PSI. I'm here with Gary, another lead mechanic of the team. And uh, I have this question, I'm sure everyone asks you this, mm. how many tires do you glue? Or how many wheel tire combos does the team run through for oh, a year? You know, Mike might have been a good person on that, but I think there's about 60 to 80 pairs of wheels, I believe. So yeah, Mike and Gary have, I think, about 60 years collectively between the two of them wrenching. That's and crazy. Then, the, you know, for me, and, and even in a domestic racing scene, we all fly in together, we go home, fly in. But in Europe, they're all together. So those guys are really close to the riders. Yeah. And they know all the details and it's just boom, boom. Then I boom. watched them work together. They like, like they knew already, they yeah. predicted what the, what, what the PSI the riders wanted yeah. and gave it to them and the riders were like, that was great. Well, we make notes from some of the races. Obviously this is a new venue, so we don't have any notes, but like in, in Europe, we'll document what pressures were run so that the next time we come back, we start, we have a benchmark. Did, did, he, did he just call your tire pressure out? He's correctly? I think we're on like a 10. 10 race streak with that. Y'all are crazy. They'll, they'll do the pre-lap and they'll come back and get, the riders will give you feedback yeah. in terms of like how the wheel's feeling, how the tire's feeling, and then you guys will adjust the pressure based on yeah. what they give you. The riders can go out and they'll just do hot laps and try and figure out where the, you know, because on a tubular, the idea is there's a, there's a happy medium between yeah. flatting, but still feeling that <laughs> it's rim. It's a very fine line, right? And getting enough traction in the corners and it could be a half a PSI. So they'll come in and we'll try different things. And That's crazy. We're always out on course with an air gun so we can adjust it as need be.